A few questions. The, one of the biggest questions I have for you is, you know, if you knew what you were going to be today, what would you have told yourself back then? If I could tell myself, uh, I'll probably take squash a little bit more seriously when I was much younger. Because it only started off like a weekend activity sort of thing. So if I knew I would actually take it up as a career, I'd probably have done it a little bit more seriously when I was young. I'm very passionate about squash and I train day in, day out. I've been doing it for the past 10 years, 12 years. I would say, and it's something I really want to do. It never actually crossed my mind until I was about 16, 17, when I actually thought of turning professional. But before that, it was just playing for fun, and then a weekend activity. I represented Penang, and then Malaysia, and then from there, it was still wasn't that clear that I'm going to do this for, for a living. about Wernie, we're calling her Wernie <laughs> now, okay? So she's, uh, she was born in Penang lah. She's born and bred in Penang. She started squash at a very early age, uh, even before eight. She was about seven plus. So what was she like? I mean, you know, as a child, was she cheeky, playful? I heard she liked to play instead of, you know, go to school. No, you're, you're <laughs> absolutely wrong. Oh, she, yeah? Yeah, she, in fact, uh, she is a very obedient child. And then uh, a quick learner. Yeah. A quick learner. So uh, that makes life easier for me. <laughs> oh, she never played with dolls and she never watched cartoons. She's more into adventure movies. Okay. And uh, she likes uh, outdoor sports. So after her squash training, maybe about 7 plus or so, immediately after squash training, when she gets back, she will just drop by to Dalat school and train with those... Uh, it's actually a team... Uh, team like, sport, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, upon completion of her O-levels way back in uh, end year 2007, uh, Squash Record Association of Malaysia proposed that she turns professional. I told her that I respect her decision and I stood by her through thick and thin knowing that whatever the choice that she made is never going to be a bed of roses. But you know, sometimes during a, a, a game or a tournament, and obviously she wants to win, goes out all out to win. And sometimes things don't go as it's planned. So how do you as a mother actually encourage her and you know, to support her? And what, what would you say to keep her going? Then? Well, all these years, you know, we adopt that policy, you know, you win some, you lose some. As long as you put in your very best, just move forward. forward. Do you have something you want to show us? Yes, this is the community work that uh, both the girls are involved in. Yep. Uh, they had this, I think, about two years ago. Uh, they uh, organised a squash clinic for those uh, children. Another thing is women is also one of the ambassadors for the organ donors. Okay. So this was when... Um... Yeah, when she got a sponsorship from Air Asia. Oh yeah? Yeah, in the March 2013. Okay. These are the, the medals that the girls acquired during their junior days in squash. And this is her maiden victory when she won the China Open, which is a gold series. Wow. That was last year. So that's a funny looking racket. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit story of the racket? Well, this racket is actually a modified racket. It's uh, being chopped off a couple of inches to suit her height. 
she was very short when she was young. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, the normal records is uh, so much longer. What about the rest of the trophy? It has a lot. Uh, this is just only part of it. This is yeah, there's still many, many more which has been, you know, uh, 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 plates and all this which has actually been kept. We will, uh, let's say, maybe one fine day and uh, if uh, everything goes on well, maybe we have a gallery all for her trophies. Um, as Leland's first coach, when she joined my squash group um, under the Junior Penang Junior Development Program, and she was this little tiny little girl with um, two ponytails and thick glasses. Thick glasses. Yeah. yeah. I coached her for about two years, but it was just basic, really basic hand-eye coordination skills, yeah. and she was really keen. It was she was quite. And determined to pick it up, she's grown so much. From that tiny little girl with two ponytails to being world number six, she's it's been tremendous. What what would you say would be the major differences about her now and then? Definitely now more mature, yeah. more grown up. Um, I would say more confident, and um, she's still that quiet girl, and she she's just done brilliantly.